29. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name's Maggie and I work at Amy's House of Care in West Meadows. Okay, so as you can see, Maggie's my hairdresser. <laughs> And we're going to, I'm going to interview her today for you for your careers. Um, okay, Maggie, would you like to uh, talk about what, you're, what you do as a job? I think um, everyone can guess. Yeah, so I'm a hairdresser. <laughs> uh, so I do haircuts, colours, men's hair, kids' hair, anything to do with hair. I do it. Okay, so what's your role? Uh, so I'm in the hairdresser. What is your role responsibility? Uh, so I'm a senior hairdresser, so I work just below the owner. Um, and yeah, I just, I do all my clients, I have my own following for the day, um, which is obviously scheduled um, the times and stuff like that, so I have to run on time every day. Um, you know, I could have anywhere between 10, 15 clients, 20 clients, um, and yeah, just doing cuts, colours, um, yeah, anything to do with hair. Cool. Thank you. Uh, how long have you been in your current job? Now I know this, because you've been, <laughs> we've been together yeah. since then. Yes. Um, well, actually, I started before. Um, I've been hairdressing for eight years. So I started when I was 15. Um, yeah, so I did my apprenticeship for four years. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I started before. And how long have you been at this salon? I've been here for two years nearly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, uh, where else have you gotten to work? And what other places? Yep. Yeah. So I've worked, I started my apprenticeship at a salon called Esprit Hair. Um, so they have three salons, so I've travelled back in all three. Um, was that in Melbourne? Yeah, that's Melbourne, yep. um, it's in the city. So there was one on Flinders Lane, one in Docklands and one on Burke Street. Um, from there I went on to work at a place called Heading Out Hair and Beauty on Burke Street in the city for another few years. And then I qualified there. And then from there I worked at a salon called uh, Broda Hair Boutique. Um, which is in London, Australia, Turek. Um, and I was there for a couple of years. Um, and I managed a salon in Melbourne for do or die for about a year and a half. And um, yeah. Uh, now, can you remember what subjects you did in high school? Uh, so we spoke about this before. No, I don't. <laughs> um, I remember doing English and maths and all that stuff, but I did leave school when I was halfway through year 11 to start my apprenticeship. And that was sort of the year that you got to choose your subjects. I lived in Queensland then, and that's sort of what we did there. I don't know if it's different in Victoria. Um, but yeah, I just did sort of the main subject science, maths, English, all that stuff. Yeah. Mm, um, so, did you have to do extra studies, and where did you? Where did you go or what particular places provide those courses for you? Yep, so I actually, when I was in high school, I started doing my certificates through in hairdressing. Um, so I would take one day off school um, and go to TAFE. Um, but then once I started my apprenticeship here in Melbourne, um, what I did was I apprenticeship. So I worked four days a week, and then one day a week I was sent to hairdressing uh, college. Um, so that was on a Wednesday, and I went um, to Twitter Point um, there on on South Street, and that was for four years, last week. And yeah, that got me a certificate three in hairdressing, so that means you're qualified. Yeah, and then you can go on to do a search for for management and stuff like that if you want to. Have you done any other yeah. qualifications? Yeah, I did start my search for, haven't finished it yet, but I started it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. I, I've done a lot of like cutting courses, colour courses, and stuff like that, but that's not sort of a, a certificate as such, it's more of a advanced techniques and stuff like that. Okay. Well, how long does one of those cutting courses or the hair courses, is it? Um, look, the, the cutting course that I did took 10 months, but that was once a month for 10 months, so that was 10 lessons. Um, obviously, they give you homework and stuff to do in the salon, you know, things to try and stuff like that. Um, or you could just do a, a weekend course, could be three days or one day styling course and stuff like that, just to sort of show you a couple of different techniques. Yeah, they can be quick or long. Depends how much you want to sort of improve on and sort of how detailed it is. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Um, we've done qualifications. Um, did you want to share how much you earn or yeah, can earn as a hairdresser? I don't mind. So hairdressing is such a massive range of wage to be very honest with you. So you could work for yourself at a point you could be earning three figures a year easily. Um, you know, or you could work in a salon. In a salon you don't really get to earn too much, so you could be earning maybe 
50 to 60 grand a year, roughly. But you're making money mostly on your bonuses. So that would be, a lot of salons will say how much you earn per week, how much you upsell, so retail, treatments, extra services and stuff like that. So, you know, you could make all your money on your bonuses. It's really more about how much you earn the business and then you get the extras for yourself. So, yeah, that's sort of how hairdressing works. But look, if you work for yourself at home, you could definitely make a fair bit of money with that sort of doing all that extra stuff. But it helps. And look, I think you just have to be really honest with your clients and whatever they need. A lot of do clients do need treatments. You know, it's the majority do. So you do tend to upsell that stuff, not not having to, which is by recommending them. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, is there high employment opportunities as yes. a hairdresser? Yes, definitely. Um, look, I think uh, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and it's good because, um, you know, as a hairdresser, you can be casual, you can be part-time, you can be full-time, you can work from home. You really kind of can do anything, you know, which is a good thing, I guess, in a way that if I lost my job tomorrow, I could set up a chair from home is that working or you know there's always there's so many salons you know really every corner you turn there's a, there's a hair salon so there's always somewhere um, and they're always looking for people that are good you know good quality and people that are willing to learn um, yeah yeah I definitely would say so and so for getting your job here yep. um, how did you find that Kat needed a hairdresser and what was the process yep. Um, look, to be honest, before here, um, I it was always by recommendation. I sort of fell into my first one because of a family friend that I knew and they knew a salon and so on and so forth. And that was, you know, and then with my other jobs, you know, a friend recommend me, I'd move on with them, that sort of stuff. But this one I actually found on Seek. Um, so that was the first time I actually had a real interview, to be honest, because it was, yeah, my first job that I wasn't recommended to. So, um, you know, I came in, I saw Kat, she was lovely and we just got on along really well. So yeah, it was really good. And did she um, want to see you cutting? So, yep. you, so what's that process yep, of yep. her? Yeah. So we came in, I had a chat with her and then we organized for me to come in on a Thursday, um, which is one of her late nights. Uh, so we worked 10 to 8, yep. And yeah, you know, I just did some of her regulars, which already they knew, you know, that I was coming for a trial. Um, and I just did sort of some simple haircuts um, blow waves, all that sort of stuff, some kids' cuts, um, and yeah, just to sort of show her what I can do. And yeah, she was happy. So, yeah. Excellent. Uh, and so, uh, what is the hard thing about your job, if there's anything hard about your job? Yep. And what are the things you like the most about your job? Yep. Um, I'll start with the positive. Um, I think it's good, I guess, to be really creative. With Mel, for example, <laughs> I get to make her blue or pink or whatever we want to do anytime we want. Um, you know, it's really nice to sort of see your clients once every four weeks. Get, you know, they become like family. You get to know them really well. You know about their life and their partners and their pets and their grandparents. And it's just, it's really nice. And you get to make them feel good once they leave, which is really special. You know, a lot of places, you know, I think it's quite rare to find some, something like that. So it's really nice to have that bond. Um, downside, look, you do have to work weekends. So Saturdays we're here, some salons require Sundays. You're here on the late nights until 8 p.m. But, you know, it makes it worth it. You know, it's, it just, you gotta weigh it up. You know, you gotta stand on your feet all day, all that sort of stuff. But you just, if you love what you do, it's true, it doesn't feel like work. So, you know, you just gotta find what you're passionate about. Um, what traits uh, are important to be a hairdresser? Um, I think you need to be a good uh, people's person, really. I think you need to be able to communicate really well. Um, figure out how to make your visions meet at the same time as well. So, you know, for some people blue might look like one colour and then for me it might look like a different colour. So you've really got to try and narrow it down and sort of find ways to work around that, like photos and stuff like that. You've got to be really bubbly. You can't have bad days. You know, you leave your stuff at the door when you come in. You don't bring your personal life in. You just have to be really professional, um, you know, because it, it just impacts the whole day, really. But yeah, you know, it's just as long as you're positive and you can hold a conversation for like 13 <laughs> hours a day, you're all good to go. <laughs> Um, so it's easy for you to get a job around Australia as a hairdresser. What about if you wanted to go overseas? Yep. 
Um, look, you, you can get stuff overseas. I actually did a course while I was an apprentice um, with a brand called Kevin Murphy. Um, so what you do is you go with them for about six months, you know, sort of a couple of times a month and you do a couple of courses and styling. Um, so now I actually, if I want to, I can do Paris Fashion Week, I can do New York Fashion Week, um, all that sort of stuff. So um, look, it's sort of, it's really about who you know, um, you know, especially those high-end places. Um, you know, a lot of hair just can cut hair, but can you cut really good? is another thing. So being taught by the best um, is a plus. Um, you know, and then they know your work and they're willing to have you work with them for those really big events. Um, so it's really good to sort of network and do all that stuff. It's, it's very exciting if you put yourself out there. Um, you know, I've had uh, people go overseas just to promote products. You know, they've been sent to New York and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's really good. You've just really got to put yourself out there and. And yeah, meet people, meet new people, go, you know, go on all the training nights, do what you can to, yeah, to just show yourself and show your work, you know, get your Instagram going, all that sort of stuff, show your work and yeah, people will follow you. Thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to share with the you know? So I think you've told them heaps about being a hairdresser. Yeah, I think what, I think if I was to sort of say one thing was to, I knew that I wanted to be a hairdresser from a very young age, um, but once I did qualify, I wasn't sure just because I had done it since I was 15, I didn't know anything else. One regret that I do have, and I'm not just saying it because I'm not a teacher, <laughs> I regret not finishing school. Um, I missed out on, you know, school for more, I missed out on, you know, having a year 12 certificate. So if I did ever want to change, my job. A lot of jobs do require year 12. So I would, if you do want to do an apprenticeship or anything like that, have a look at your options as well, just in case you ever want to do anything else, would be my advice. Um, I did end up going into an admin role for a little bit, um, which was good. I ended up realizing that I only wanted to do hairdressing, which was great, but I would definitely have a look at all your options if you did want to school would be my advice. Cool. Thanks, Maggie. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>